theirs. Okay, next one is, oops, spelled that wrong. Nanette, uh, Nanette Whitemiss um, plot. <clears throat> called Leaf Haven. Um, it's designated as an RP plot, so those of you that are really looking for an Orany type um, uh, scene or uh, environment to come and R, uh, you know, role play um, your little storylines for your personal character uh, stories and stuff, this would be um, a good place to come. Um, this one, uh, the builder actually contacted me to let me know that it was available. Um, and I appreciate that. I've had other people suggest other people's homes, either their guildmates or friends or something like that. Um, it's always helpful because usually how I come across these houses is just randomly. I use the random uh, visitor tool and I just start clicking homes that I don't recognize the name of or the, the character name of. Um, and sometimes I get lucky and sometimes it takes me hours to find something uh, worth looking at. Uh, because as most that have used that tool know, it can be uh, pretty disappointing because a lot of the homes listed, they might have some really interesting names, but you go to the plot and it's like empty or it looks like they're having a garage sale, just everything is out on the lawn and in just disarray and it just looks awful. and. So most people just kind of give up on that tool. And that's one of the reasons why I made my um, amazing builders list in the forum uh, for uh, EU at least. Um, it's just, you know, while I put in the work of going and visiting a lot of these houses and just, you know, spending hours doing that and looking for these wonderful places to look at, I hope to, you know, make it easier for those that find it frustrating. And I say, well, here, if you want to avoid all that frustration, just look at this list. There's a lot of homes that you will enjoy checking out, and that's what that's for. But it takes time, and there's a lot of homes that I probably miss just because either the name doesn't pop up on the randomizer, or um, maybe it does, but I end up selecting a different home, and then I don't see that name again, that kind of thing. So when people suggest homes for me to look at, as long as they're public and I can get to them and anybody else can get to them as well, um, I'm happy to take a look. I can't guarantee that I will showcase all of them or that I will even list all of them. But if I feel there's enough um, interesting bits to it, specifically, I, I really favor um, either unique themes or uh, a lot of custom building. If it has one or two or both of those elements, it's almost a guarantee that it would be added to my list and that eventually someday down the road I would tour it. Um, but I appreciate when people help me out with that because, you know, I, I try my best to find as many new ones as I can, but, you know, obviously there are going to be times when I miss them. Um, and maybe they've been up for months and I think, oh, this is a new place. And really it's been around for a while and, and it's just, I haven't come across it yet. So this is uh, Nanit's place, um, Leaf Haven. And uh, again, if it's an Orin heavy uh, type of plot, but a really not a lot of nice elements. Um, the little staircase here, that's uh, Orin floors. It could be triangle pieces too. It could be either or. Um, as long as it's got that corner piece uh, sticking out and they've just made it a nice tiered stairway into this what i presume is like a throne room um you know maybe it's for the queen to come and sit and meet with her subjects and talk about you know problems of the community how they can work on them things like that uh, the throne is really nicely done um, I've seen others, and usually when you think of throne, you're thinking, you know, Draken and, and uh, stuff like that, because they got all those bones and horns and, and leather and everything. But this one's really uh, cutely done. It's a combination of uh, ore and fence pieces, the fence posts for the, the rails there, uh, green, uh, small green pillows for the majority of the cushions and the seat. Um, if you got some of the foreign pillars, uh, forget the name of it, but it's like a flower pillar or something. You don't see the whole thing. They just tucked it so that you see the top part. 
And uh, again, it's um, to get that little flower to show up there. They've used the, the pillar as the main little crowning piece there. Um, the back lit part is just the colorful Orin window with, uh, I think it's the Orin night light uh, there. That's a lovely light because the, the leaf actually shows the lighting of the leaf on the walls. But um, it's a really soft light, kind of a um, little purple in shade, so it doesn't fit everywhere. But for this, it works really nice. And of course, they got a variety of uh, orange windows, the pink and the orange. And it's just the combination of dome and hollow dome uh, being used as the building itself using hoogles as the, the pillars that hold it together. Really nice and orany. I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong with all of those elements. Okay, so, oh, and uh, for the little pearls here, those, again, those are um, tall files. They just sunk it down so that you only see um, the bottoms of it, the little long necks is this item here, and they've just flipped it over and made it look like those giant pearls. I think in some of the the orany places, there's like um, those bag of pearls, um, and so you see all these little funny baubles um, in different situations, and I think that's what they're there to represent. So that's one part. Um, this part, which I'm probably going at this all wrong, but I, I still want to show it. It's a nice little river scene. They've got it winding all through here, I think. Um, again, we have the water uh, decor, the winding rivers and the waterfalls, but uh, you really have to plan ahead when you're going to use water on your plot. Um, you can't, uh, if you're wanting to, to look representative of there being a depth to the water like this, you really have to think about how you're going to do it. Are you going to raise all of the ground level and then have the water so that it looks like it's sunk into the ground, kind of like I did on my plot? Um, or uh, do it like this. Raise the water to the height that you want and then just box it in with stones um, and other uh, landscape features so that um, it uh, keeps it separate from the rest of the grounds. Um, so it still looks like a natural part of the property, but um, it's uh, not exactly flat so that it gives some depth to the water. Otherwise, it's just going to look a little funny. Um, so here we have a little bit of a little bit of a cave kind of thing where they can meet. Just put some pillows and, and things in, but it's constructed um, of interesting bits. I mean, there's the the purple arch rock, uh, there's some obsidian stone, there's uh, the gray uh, the gray stones, um, some of the swirly rocks, and of course the overgrowth and all sorts of uh, ferns and, and brambles used to make it you know, kind of overgrown. Looks like a hoogle there as well, and then of course the granite fencing to kind of tie it all in together. Just going to go back through here. I know the water is really not meant to be walked in, but that's what I'm using. Um, here, another little meeting place. Really nicely done. As well. You know, I always admire those that can really do the landscaping nicely. Uh, for me, I would probably make it too, um, I would be worried of overcrowding it too much. Um, so it would kind of overtake everything that you're doing here, but um, they've done a nice job of, of you know, not making it too much, but uh, just enough where it looks, you know, like a healthy uh, jungly type uh, area. So here's the back of the main house, and they've added extra little elements in. So like you have this uh, plate of food being cooked in the little um, oven here. And they've added some little seating, you know, we've got this nice, simple little glass table. It's just a hoogle with a, a framed glass on top. Simple, but unique. You know, not everybody's going to think about doing that with their, um, with their 
Google. Um, you've got this little, uh, and that, they've got lots of these little sitting areas, which is really nice. Um, but then you have this, uh, I guess it's supposed to be like a pool. It could be a, a sauna type of thing, um, but they've made it out of, it's a waterfall. Just kind of sunk in so that you only see the top part of it. Inside uh, a bowl, or several bowls, I should say, bowls being used for the stairs, um, or in pillars, or uh, the framework of the little gazebo thing here. Then one of those uh, or in uh, pillar tops, and then another bowl for the top. So it's like a combination gazebo sauna pool thing. It's a really cute little design. Yeah, there's a little bit of water sticking out here, but you can overlook it. I mean, it, it's tough working with the, the, the shapes that we have and still make it look lovely. Using Orin uh, windows just to kind of give it a lot of decoration. Nice job. Over here, this almost looks like some kind of a pool thing too, but I think it's because the bubbles are coming up. Now, I believe this is part um, fab kit and part things that they've added into the fab kit because I'm pretty sure this waterfall feature is not part of the fab kit. They've added that in. And it looks really gorgeous. Um, I, from my own experience trying to use these waterfalls in different bits, it's not easy to find them where they curve against the rocks and things like they're supposed to. Um, it's tough, you know, the, that together. But they've got, you know, lots of hoogles, lots of the swirly rocks, lots of waterfalls. They've even added in little bits of the uh, space suite to kind of give it a little bit of a pop and color. And they did that throughout, so that kind of ties everything in nicely. Let me go this way. You see, with the bubbles coming through, it makes it look like little special little pools. This way. Let's see if I can get to this one. I'm sure this isn't the way to it, but that's how I'm coming. So see, it's like little steam pools. I have no idea what they're using for this. It looks like a sign of some sort or one of those new engine parts for the blue. And those spore plants, either the bush or the tree, for those green bubbles coming up. I like the little incense uh, bowl here. It's just pillars for the little incense sticks, um, then the swirly stones, and then for the smoke effect, it's probably one of the cauldrons, either the witch's brew or the uh, the bubbling cauldron that you can get. One of the two. So again, it's a really great way of incorporating a, a fab kit into your plot. They have the the hoogle, I guess it's called the hoogle hinge, and then they've just added a lot of elements to it to expand on it. Really nicely done. Over here we have um, an interesting little, it's another seating gathering place. Um, different ways of using the, the tables. They've got one that's hanging from the ceiling as a shelf, and then the other one used as the actual table. The clever idea. I wouldn't have thought of that myself. You know, maybe eventually, but not, not right away. <laughs> So the staircase here is hover part pieces. I think it's called the, like the edge piece or something. It's really great for, um, you know, having those round curvy bits. Uh, this looks like an upside down uh, or in window and then they've got the tree cables again. This is like the little art studio. Really adorable little setup here. Um, so they've got like finished paintings here, then they have an empty canvas on their little easel. And then here, if you can get really close in, you can see they've actually got um, mops for the paint brushes. And then they have this little palette of paint 
So they've used different items. I, I couldn't name what all of them probably are, but like the green is the green pillow. And then you have a blue one, orange, and like some maybe red or black or something. And they've just taken the time of using little splotches of color from different items. Maybe it's the bottoms of bottles or uh, buckets or something, plates even. And then, uh, of course, they have the, uh, the chew cups as like here's the, the dry one, and then they've got one filled with water, which it looks like the bottom of a glass. And the floor is just another orange window. And they've got one up there. Notice they've decorated their bookcase. It's one way of kind of separating your standard bookcases from everybody else's standard bookcases. They've just added a few extra little elements using the leaf windows to kind of add some decoration to it. Like I said, it's just little touches like that that can really go a long way in, in uh, making your place unique. So here's another little scene here. It's more like a, a stage area. They've got the microphone here for the speaker. And then the seating area for the participants there. Probably going at the spot all wrong, in the wrong order, but you know. <laughs> you know me, I just kind of mix and match it. Uh, using the ore and landing pad as a kind of a place. And this looks to be like um, a little open market. Um, so you have uh, like plushy, little plushy sales here. Um, this one here is uh, maybe it's candies or some type of food. I don't know. Here's the cheese and fruits and plants. Kind of hard to see because the lighting's a little dark at the moment. Um, I like the little, I guess it's like the fortune teller uh, area. She's got her crystal ball. And they've got that, the lightning strike that we got from the uh, hover pre thing, Z pre uh, event. They got the lightning strike ending it so that it's right inside that and really just kind of brings attention to the crystal ball there. That's a fun little technique there. Um, then you have the weapons dealer. And even a little practice place where you can try out your purchases. Over here we have another little seating area. It's just again uh, decking pieces for the base of it or in window for the little bit of decoration there. little mushroom garden back. Another little mushroom garden. Now I think that's supposed to be representative of a, a faux house there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's a little Oran house um, made out of uh, arches for the rounded window, the, the doorway. And then uh, topped with domes and uh, curved walls, I would assume, to make up this structure here. Can't get in because it's a window on this side, but it gives you a nice little peek into the interior. A cute little waterfall here, a little tiered one. Again, it's just uh, looks like cylinders. Teared up, sized, and positioned just so. Again, hoogles, lots of the snow flowers, and uh, I think actually these are the, the arranged ones in the vase, and they just sunk it in so that you can't really see the vase. A little archway, that's um, part of one of those uh, Winterfest fences. A little orange window on there. We'll go there here shortly. And that's the entrance to that little house that we saw a peek of. Just trying to kind of catch everything that's on this exterior first. Here's another little seating area, a little two tier one. And then parts of the river that we saw earlier. 
Um, if you're wondering how the bridge is made, it looks to be um, hover part pieces for the curved bit in the center, and then it's trimmed in a colorful orange window. It's a nice idea. Very big and bold and, and very orangey, obviously. So I think this is like the main entrance where you would come in and you go through this little tunnel. Trees and bushes and overgrowth into this little village type thing. Now I think this is a fab kit. Um, forget what it's called. I don't know if it's the date night or, or what. And this is the main home. We'll come into that one later. I want to just finish exploring everything that's out here first. Yeah, so that's the little arch that we saw a minute ago. Um, if we came in through there, we'd come in through this little fence that you've set up. And that brings you to this little orangey hut village. So the first one, come in through here. And this is the one where we were peeking in the window. Um, it's just crazy what all the pieces they used to put this together. Um, it looks like the center piece is one of the uh, Oren uh, fence posts. And then you've got a combination of different uh, hover part pieces, Oren arches, Oren walls, uh, floors um, for the main construction. Um, like this little counter here, I believe that's an upside down uh, feeding trough. Um, part of this oven setup, that's the mailbox, the Chua version. Um, this little cabinet here, that's just two orange uh, dressers stuck together. For the little fireplace here, that's um, two of the, I think it's the metal bowl um, sized up and used as a, a vent and base for that fireplace. The couch here is made out of um, round purple pillows and then the long uh, purple rolls. Again, notice the little baubles that they strewn about the room. It's a very common thing that you see in uh, a lot of the orange places out in the open world. So they've done a good job of keeping with that. Cylinders for that, the doorway there. On to the next floor, and you have the little bedroom area. Again, the table is one of those troughs, and then they've, you know, given the baubles and stuff. A little gift. So that's one. Uh, let's go to this one next, I guess. This is a faux one. You can see um, they're using for the keyhole. Uh, it's one of those keyhole windows um, against a uh, orange, colorful orange window. And then I think it's the orange uh, clock, little cuckoo clock. And they just turned it around so you see the back of it. And that's the door uh, frame. It's a fun idea to make the faux buildings. The top of it, I think, is the top of the orange um, tent. It's this thing here, but just enlarged, and so you only see the purple part. And then they just added uh, different windows, like that's the, the leaf window and um, things like that to kind of decorate it up. We'll go up the, the shrooms here in a moment. Uh, check here. I like the little um, direction sign, how it's just, <laughs> there's all sorts of things up, down, sideways, uh, but it's a clever uh, arrangement. I mean, we don't have a lot of signposts or anything, so this is one way of doing it. I mean, it doesn't have writing on it or anything, so it doesn't really tell you what's where, but it's just kind of an indication of that. And it's just um, a pillar with two by fours for the sign parts, and then one of those um, uh, orange vases. Uh, it has like the green uh, grass growing out of it. 
It's just upside down as the top of it, and then put some flowers on top of that. It's a cute idea. I like that. Leads to the river and the back of uh, the main house. That's the main house there. So let's go up to this one. You have this little orangey bit here. It looks like an orange chair that's being used as a topper. And of course, the back has been hidden inside this big tree here. And then, of course, the arched gate entrance. So you have this nice little house. Two by fours for the shelving. Lots of detail as far as all the elements put in to kind of make it look a little lively. Little bonsai tree here. Mobile back porch area where they've used a bowl and then planted plants in it and made it look like a little, you know, backyard garden. Very cute. I mean, it's the fruit trellises and then it's just different plants lined up. Look like a little garden. And that was that two tiered um, little seating we saw earlier. So then we're going to go up these shroomies if we can. What's up top here? You're wondering how they got these um, roots and things to be able to walk on them. It's part of that new canopy uh, plant that you can get. And they've just added in these little tree shelves. Nice idea. After I used mine on my Cupid, Cupid's Meadow plot, I considered uh, doing similar, but I didn't really want to mimic theirs too much. So I decided to just leave mine pretty bare. Now you'll see that this is an alternate way up here. There's more shrooms coming uh, from different directions, but one way to get up to it. So here's a little, like a meeting place. Again, a lot of the same elements, domes, hollow domes. Um, that's an orange chandelier up top. Uh, it's a really pretty uh, lighting because it's got those little um, like lightning bug bits coming off of it. But uh, look at this little arrangement here. I don't know what they're using for the table part. Probably about the only thing I can't really identify. <clears throat> Lots of overgrowth for this uh, bit up here. Keeping it all nice and green. And one good thing about the overgrowth, it is it does consider uh, itself solid so it's not like you can just walk through the the blades of uh, leaves so you're safe with using it as a, a method of getting across here's another seating area i imagine the light that's coming through there is probably either a spotlight or maybe even the uh the standing table lamp or something the standing lamp it's got that real conical looking light source. I imagine it's the, the brass standing lamp because it's got it both top and bottom and that's kind of indicative of that particular decor. I don't really like it myself, uh, but that's a good use for it. Kind of give it a little extra oomph. Again, hover part pieces for these little tiers out here. There's just a lot of things. It's all connected up here, so it's gonna be really easy to kind of get lost and maybe miss some bits. Here's a, another bit. They're using the, the domes for the stairway. And you come out to this little bit. Um, decoration is just foreign fencing um, to give it that extra little viney look. Um, hover part pieces um, for the little platform here. And then uh, hollow domes uh, turn just so, so that there's this nice little opening, but it's enclosed for the most part. It's a really clever way of doing a round building. 
Um, I like this a lot. It's usually, you know, like with the, the new um, Elden Dome, it's got these little cutouts. And, you know, when you're thinking like um, igloos and stuff, you have to have some special cutout. This is a really good way of making a round home and still having this nice little doorway. You know, yes, you have some overlapping here and there, but it's a small price. You know, it's a good compromise to get a nice little shape like this. And they've topped it with a ball for added decoration so that it looks like, you know, a typical Oren place. Here again, it's, it's similar to some of the other places using the um, trough for the table, um, decking pieces for the shelves here. Uh, layered arches to give this little decoration on this doorway here. A cute little bed. I don't know what they're using for the bed itself. It looks like the bottom of one of the Oren vases, um, just because of this little decoration I see here. But it could be just a purple pillow that's sunk down so you don't see all the dark purple. It's just flipped over. Um, Oren window for the, uh, the uh, bed frame back there. Let's see. Come on, up the stairs, Missy. So then you come up to this little spot, little desk, everything. Really nice little setup. Again, for role players, this being open to them for use, this is a lovely place. That's the, the meeting area that we saw in the beginning. Okay, if we can kind of backtrack it. See if I don't fall. I'm horrible at jumping puzzles, so those of you that put these things in just make my job harder. <laughs> So if we go down these leaves, um, find another little meeting area. But this one has like a little makeshift game, game of stones of some sort. Simple, but you know, the idea is there. And that's, you know, really what matters. You can tell that it's some type of a little game that they play on different colored stones. And of course, then you have another little stairway that leads down to another little seating area. This is definitely a place if you want to come and have a little private chat uh, away from the others. There's lots of little um, nooks and crannies for you to, to kind of meander off to. Okay, I can avoid falling and make sure we visited all of the bits out here. Um, this one is looks like granite pillars and then uh, different windows for the flooring for all these little little bits. At first, I think we need to go around this way. I think there's a waterfall or something. Yeah, there's a little pool here. Looks like it starts from here and then it just trickles on down all the way down into the um, area down below. It's just kind of hard to see from here. I didn't want to miss that. But a cute little idea. Lots of orany touches. You just don't want to miss it all. So you have access to this one. It's a nice little seating area. And then you go up and you get access to um, this area. Go through the arches and you come out this one and it looks like um, they made their own little teapot uh, even though uh, according to some of the, the the decor that we've been spying on the decor shopper uh, from Katia's add-on that there are some actual teapot and teacup elements coming 
um, it's still been fun to watch how other people build those kind of things. So for their little teacups, um, they're basically just using bowls um, and uh, plate combinations to make it. The teapot itself looks to be like a tall file for the spout, um, some uh, hanging wires for the little handle up top, and it's a bowl with a plate, a metal plate on top of it. It's a really cute little design. You know, but it's little details like that. It's really easy to overlook and not notice. And um, it's those kind of things I like pointing out. It's really easy to just kind of, oh, it's a seating area and not notice you know, the extra little details they put in. I love these little candle um, displays. I don't know what you'd call them. Candle holders, candle something. It's really simple. It's just a bowl and some curved glass, but you know, it's extra little decoration. I like that. So another seating area. This one's got the, the lop hookah. Lots of little, I just love all the detail. Okay, let's see if I don't fall here, because I think there's some gaps in this one and it makes me nervous. So like, you can go down here, these little tiered bits, so here you have like a little campfire. It's just like tiered floating, I mean they're using like the, the loftite stuff to kind of show that these are floating little individual bits. Um, here's another little meeting place, cozy inside the little tree. And again, you can reach it by several points. You can see it's all interlaced together. It's nuts how connected this is, which is, you know, perfect because that's how all these little villages are, but it's also easy to get lost. <laughs> Here we come on another little meeting area, and here, here's a little better uh, view of that uh, coffee pot. This one, uh, teapot. This one's a little different. Instead of using the hanger wire for the handle, they just use the top of um, the short file uh, and uh, set it up like that. They even use different cups instead of bowls. They just use the tiny two of cups, uh, a decking piece for the tray. And they even went through the trouble, there's like a little sugar bowl and stuff. Again, it's those little details that, you know, it's really awesome. For the platform, it's just the, the orange tree table for that. Stuck into the dome. And then you have this little, I guess it's where you would come and uh, do your offering bits. some lightning striking you add some little emphasis there let's see i make sure we get all of these little places visited before we go into the main little home you see this this is just the exterior that we've been on that's it okay let's see the upper part, where do we get to that? Yeah. Another little seating area. This one's more with some books and things you can get to. I'm wanting to make sure we find it all. Let's go this way again. We'll go down from here. If you're wondering what these bits are, the 
It's just the ladders, several of them together, and sometimes just the one. So this one takes you uh, back up uh, to where we come from, the little canopy part. I think we didn't see this little house here. This is a, another little dome house made into that nice little combination. They've got another little garden here. They even use white picket fences for a little shelving here, whatever you want to call it. They've got this nice bright interior. They've got uh, the chandelier, but they've put flowers with it also. Um, they've taken the the hoogal and glass and just added an extra piece of glass, turned it a little bit, and so now they have a different kind of a glass table. Um, if you're wondering where the pillows come from, that's one of the new Valentine items. Um, if you get the bundle from the cash shop, I assume it's still available. I don't know if it is or not. Um, that's one of the things you get. A little ruffly heart pillow. Um, here they have a tub. It's basically um, decking for the little tray here, uh, a um, feeding trough for the, the basin of it, and then um, one of the glasses, either a, a field glass or uh, a shot glass or something for the water effect. And then, of course, the waterfall is being shot out of the orange pillar there fence post or whatever it's called. Um, this, uh, I know this part here is the Hugel uh, portrait, um, but I don't know what they're using for the black part. Um, I have no idea on that. Um, this is one of the new Valentine uh, pieces. It's a Be Mine plushie beach version. And uh, so they probably got other bits as well. I think that's the love bed that they just dressed up differently. They've used, uh, looks like one of the purple pillows to kind of add some extra cushion to it. Probably to cover up the Cupid Chua that's on the, the bed frame for one. They just covered it with a, an orange window. But it's... Uh, uh, I think this one, the Be Mine um, Stem Dragon, that's also one of the new pieces. I have them, I just haven't used them yet. Even though I have the Valentine plot, uh, I just opted not to use them on that plot. I preferred using my own bits. Look at the nice little brown floating decoration there. way back down. Again, just shows that there's many ways you can go about getting to that upper area and just mix and match. Okay, so I I think I think we visited all of the uh, exterior. If I haven't, you know, I apologize, but I've tried my best to catch every little detail I can. Um, but now we'll go into the main home. Find a way to click on the door there. Um, you can see they've added little cues like the, the keyhole. I mean, even the main door, uh, they've changed it up. It's actually covered with uh, one of the, um, I think it's the leaf windows they opted to cover it up. You have to select it just right to be able to open it up. But, you know, this is a different way of doing it. Notice uh, they've boxed in the entryway with uh, curved exile walls. You can see the back of a, uh, an orange window there for that in the archway. Just to kind of enclose the little foyer here. It's just a, a nice bit. And then uh, when you walk through, you can see how uh, that decoration kind of 
adds in. These are fence piece and fence posts, and I just kind of decorated it up. Um, here's the little dining table. Again, they replicated the, the teapot, but this one's, again, different than the others that we saw. It's topped with a, a bowl, and the handle is, um, I'm not sure what the handle is. But it's just different, you know, it's the same concept, but they've changed it up to show that there's various ways you can make it and make it look nice. Wow, there's like a lot of weird way of dividing this up. Let me see. Let's go this way first. So here's a little bedroom. Using some of the Winterfest stockings, the socks laying on the floor. That's another one of the new Valentine pieces, is the Yeti. Go up to the top floor, and uh, I love the little chair here. A little hanging chair seat thing. It's just uh, multiple domes, hollow domes. It's been sized down to layer it up to make theirs there would be a thickness, and then they've got it hanging from the ceiling on chains, and then they've just thrown in some pillows. Looks very comfortable. Um, here, it's an interesting approach. It almost looks like there's a window to the outside. Um, maybe it's supposed to be uh, like a terrarium kind of thing. Um, they do love doing the little incense uh, trays. We've seen that throughout. So they've got another one here. Nice and lots of greenery as well with, whoops, walk right off of the stairs there. Did I miss that one? I want to miss nothing. Here's another little, ah, uh, yeah, little bedroom thing. Now, this little seat um, is basically just a tiki uh, bar, and they've turned it on its side and uh, made it into like a little, a little curb day bed seat kind of thing. It's a really nice idea. It's just. Uh, again, it's an example of how you can have an item and just flip it, turn it different, mesh it with something else, and you can create something new with it. Okay, so now let's go down in here. This is uh, what I presume to be the kitchen, all the kitcheny goodness. Um, this little uh, wine rack thing um, is basically uh, metal edged two by fours um, and other wood pieces, and then the uh, Call it the decking the floors for that little piece of furniture. I like how they put um, slices of cheese on the toast. <laughs> uh, this little wall design again, it's just the uh, the Winterfest fences, and they stuck them together to make that little overly sign and then you come into this little indoor garden uh, it's a really nice little setup I like the little ivy bit growing up here of this little bush it's different types of brambles and yellow flowers and of course the lighting that they've got here really kind of neonizes it so it makes it look a little bit more colorful than it probably really is which is a good way of uh, handling it plus they've got the red lantern on it so that adds some extra funny color. But it's just, you know, desert plants. Um, they got the, the leafy plants, the, the little trellises. Up there. Just a lot of detail. I mean, there's a lot of items that they've put in. Even the chains to, to support that shelf that's there. 
you go this way, we come into what looks like the bathroom. You have a little cabinet. It's just the a wooden container crate thing topped with uh, two orin walls. Um, a little soap on the dish is a green pillow. And then the sink is a bowl. The toilet, I, I, <laughs> I'm always amused at how people come up with their own personal toilets. This one, it's just a toilet paper roll used as the, the seat. Um, a plate for the lid, um, an exile mattress for the little mat, um, some uh, decking pieces to make the little crate box for the, the magazines. I think that's the garage theme dresser for the back. Just a fun idea. <laughs> and the shower, they make it look like it's got a handle. Like, um, Looks like dome pieces, a couple of domes stuck together to make it look like a handle. The shower head is uh, a Merg Dynamite and a tiny Chua cup. Um, I think this is uh, a detonator, like the red little plunger thing, um, topped with a, another little green soap of a pillow and then the two Chua cups for the handles. Uh, the vanity mirror, um, I think, is either one or two of those. It's one of those portraits. It's either the, I don't know, portrait of the Luminari or portrait of the, you know, Cassian guy or something. And it's just, you know, making it look like framed. And then they've got some um, plain unframed glass kind of show that there's a bit of a mirror there. And then, of course, the tub is just uh, another one of those round feeding troughs with the pillar thing, the fence post spitting out the water. And a glass again, probably as the water inside. Don't know what they're using for the drain. It looks like one of the, it's not the, the red moon vent, it's something else. Maybe a light post or lamp or something. I like the little um, candle sconces here. It's just the, the leaf window with a candle on it. Simple, but still uh, pretty nice. Let's see. Did I miss anything? I feel like I'm getting lost in here. I think that's all of it. Yeah, that was the garden room and then the bathroom. Okay. I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else. Um, but, you know, for all that's in it, you know, and outside of it, there's just a lot going on. It's a great place to come if you're looking for some Orin inspiration. One of many, but, you know, this is our latest that we're taking a look at. Hey, Nordna. So that was Ninit. White Mist Leaf Haven Lot. Uh, the last one we're going to visit today is, um, oops, Marshall Blue's place. Now, I think we've actually visited their plot in the past. I really can't be sure. I'd have to look at the list because we visited so many, but they've changed the theme of this one. It's called Mini Thade. And uh, while some folks may feel like it's, there's not a lot to it, I think there's a lot of interesting elements. Um, for those of you curious, this is the new Osun door. It's like a portcullis. Um, for me, I probably would have turned it the other way and have the portcullis uh, things going up instead of down into the ground. But, you know, it's just a preference. Um, but it's a really niftily um, animated prop. Um, for doors. Um, if you haven't seen this one or the like uh, the stone doors from the Turin uh, collection, uh, it's really got some nice stuff. This is uh, one of the new um, hovering uh, proto shops, stores, or whatever it's called. Uh, I've got one of them myself, and the only thing I don't like about it is as opposed to the other hovering shops like the 
um, space taco stand and things like that. This one actually moves. So if you put an NPC inside it, NPC won't move, match the movement of the floating. Um, so it's a little, you know, if you want to put um, some things on the shelves, they won't move with the, the structure. So it'll look a little funny, but if you can get past that, it's a pretty nice um, addition to the decor that we have available to us. But as, um, as the name states, and reflects many say this is a version a very reminiscent of the city uh, capital city of Thade for anyone that spends any amount of time in there a lot of these elements will feel familiar um, like we have these giant walking robots um, I will try to name some of the things being used but I'm sure I'm not going to get all of the pieces um, but like the joints are uh, the red moon vents. There's uh, looks like two of domes and curved walls. Um, the feet look like uh, retaining walls or reinforced walls. Um, they've got some rockets on the arms. I think this is like the, the drill, the little green drill that you can get. Um, there's the Chua uh, little mechanical arm that you can get. Let me get a little closer. Um, it's a Chua spotlight for the little light in the chest. An Osun, um, it could be one of those new pieces, the Osun heads, but it also might be, I don't think it's the drum because the drum has a little bit of animation that comes off of it. Um, I think it's a, a cryopod of some sort for the main part of the body. Um, cylinders for these little knobs sticking out on the shoulder pads. Gosh, what else? All sorts of bits. I think this most of it. And there's cylinders and bits like that. Um, and you'll see they've got some other robot bits over here. I think this is um, using a lot of the new spaceship decor. So I, I couldn't possibly name all those, but you can see it's a little different. How they come up with these ideas for these little robots, I don't know. You can see it looks like fin parts and, and lights and, and I don't know what all is in there. <laughs> Niftily done though. I mean, that's, I think that's a fin being used as like a sword for that one. Um, you'll see that there's all sorts of piping. All of that is is curved and cylinder parts, uh, depending on, uh, you know, they're using the Cassian version. So here you have one that's got the, the red moon vent ins inserted inside, so it looks like a little drain vent. Um, Here's a little uh, practice range. So they've got all these little bottles lined up for them to shoot at, and then they've got targets. And basically the targets, it looks like it's just multiple um, marauder signs uh, to give that round you know, target look. Um, you could also, if you want to kind of reduce the amount of decor you're using, you could use a dartboard, that might work. You might have to flip it around so it's the back of it, because um, I think most of the dartboards have some kind of weaponry sticking out of it or something, but you could probably get away with that. Um, the main part of the walls is just looks like reinforced walls with some Osun elements to kind of tie it in because um, I think Thade is supposed to be built on like ruins of Osun stuff, so that kind of works well. Um, a lot of the greenery that you see kind of looks looks like clumps of overgrowth rather than using just overgrowth everywhere like they did here. Um, they're using, uh, I think it's the the willows, the weeping willows for some of the clumps. So as with the City of Thade, you have all these little vendor uh, tents or shops or whatever you want to call it. So. It looks like they're using some of the boardwalk pieces for the little platforms that they're on. And then they just de decorated it with bits that you would associate with each one. So, you know, this might be like a, a food vendor. 
And here you have a little fueling area. Here you have um, a makeshift copter. Again, it's probably using a lot of the new uh, spaceship pieces that we got from the space chase events. But there's other elements like um, pillars, domes, some of the rockets. Um, if you go inside, you've got uh, two of floors and uh, re uh, I think it's uh, reinforced. Uh, walls or something. Uh, you've got the uh, magnetized containers. It's a really nice little setup here. But just look at that. I, I am so not mechanically inclined I couldn't come up with these things like this. And then they even have a little buggy that's coming to bring more weaponry for it. Um, it's just made out of, um, uh, again, two of parts, this dome tube. It's got the, uh, I believe the uh, garage themed lamp. They have the little steering wheel there. Um, a marauder netting for, uh, not marauder, uh, like the net shelf uh, for the little grate up at the top on top of the red moon vent. Tires, pillars for the little joints here. That's a garage themed dresser um, with uh, briefcases on the sides. And then the little trays themselves is just uh, potassium pillars kind of built together. You got the uh, chua arm, mechanical chua arm, or tech chua arm for the little joint to connect the two little trolley things here. It's a fun little idea. I don't know. Lots of people will probably like it. So here we have a little eating area. Reminds me of the ones that you see in Thay, which, you know, this is supposed to be reminiscent of. Uh, most of the building type areas is just um, two of floors for the roofing and then um, looks like exile pillars for most of the framework. But look at the attention to the framework there. It's just a lot of, a lot of bits. Um, for this raised part of ground, I assume they're using the, uh, the snowy hill. And then they've just kind of blended it in, uh, you know, maybe not perfectly, but still pretty good. Um, blended it in with stones and then overlaid that with little patches of grass. Try and, and make it make it work. And this is uh, that new stone stairs. And so then you have this little platform area. The little uh, staging area here, which I assume this is supposed to be the um, taxi landing pad. And this is their makeshift taxi here. Uh, it's a little funny looking thing. Um, the, the landing pad itself is uh, maintenance platforms and looks like Cassian triangle pieces uh, patched together to make the platform along with uh, reinforced uh, walls and uh, the metal grate shelf. Uh, the taxi uh, is a combination of engine parts, um, some of the new spaceship bits like the wings, uh, I think that's some engine parts. Um, looks like Merg Dynamite stuck on the ends there. Um, you've got uh, layered um, Red Moon vents for the front grill. Um, for the seat, for the passengers, it's just the hollow dome and then the couch, of course. Um, for the taxi driver, it's uh, that holographic uh, exile guy. And they've just set it inside so that you just see the holographic part. Um, some uh, 
exile hanging lamps, I think, for the, the little headlamps. And then for the base of it is just the, the garage themed uh, dresser. The fun little uh, combination, you know, I've, I thought about making a taxi myself at some point and I just never did. And then of course, um, it's uh, uh, portable planters sandwiched together here and there to make this little, like the little taxi place where you say, hey, I want to go here, and then you hop on the taxi. Uh, different kinds of tanks up here with a bowl and a uh, little exile light. Interesting bits, protostar thing there for that. Yes, this is supposed to represent the housing guy, maybe. I think he's close to the... Uh, this is probably representative of where you come and get your dailies. Like you have the yeah, PvP thing and the dungeon thing and the all of that. That's what this reminds me of, so I'm sure that's probably pretty close on point there. So they're using the simulated characters to represent those. And, you know, you have your little dungeon dailies and your, this would be the, the contract dailies or whatever. <laughs> okay, on down this way. Uh, we have, uh, looks like tanks. I don't know if I've seen any of these in Fade. I really haven't looked around too much on a lot of that places, but this is a makeshift one and he's got like several of them here. Um, again, it looks like a lot of chew aparts, reinforced um, walls because they have that thick and bulky metal look and it just works really well for these type of constructions. Um, looks like a two of ray gun for something there. Some of the new spaceship stuff there. That's a uh, wall mounted generator. The two of tech arm again and the little rocket. Um, two of spotlights for the lamps here. It's magnetized containers, a big favorite. And then it looks like it's just repeated for these other three. Again, you have all these little vendor type things, you know, maybe there's one for, uh, that's supposed to represent like this would be for like um, crafting maybe, or um, rune crafting or weapon crafting uh i don't know there's one that looks like for tires and stuff another vendor shop this is weaponry since they have the little armor thing there this one looks like it's being built or maybe that's where you come to get your building supplies here you have a little fountain, the Orin decoration, uh, not Orin, uh, Osun, and of course Dragon uh, Bits. Again, I like how they've replicated some of the shelving that we have in the city of Fade, which we don't actually have here in the housing, but they've managed to kind of make it look similar because they have those blue tables and they've got all these nifty shelves and they've just layered um, regular exile tables and did the same thing. It's a really nice way of going about it. When you don't have it available, here's a little, looks like a blueprint, a little miniature of what they're wanting to build. Again, some of them are under construction using the, the welder NPCs for that. Here's like maybe where you come to 
get your costumes or your armor. A little scissors made out of knives. Don't have a lot of clothing type uh, items, but they, they make do with the, the towels and the shirts and things. Okay, let's see. Did I miss any of the shops? I don't think so. So just when you think there's nothing else to look at, you'll have the bunker. Now, I know the bunker isn't a whole lot, but there's still some fun bits about it. Um, partly um, that they've taken the time to, to word it. Uh, you've got bay one and bay two. They're just using hover part pieces sunk down into the floor to make the, the lettering. You can see some of it is uh, the hollow bits. They just sandwiched it in. It's really tough to, to sort out wording because we just don't have that available. But um, here they have another little tractor thing pulling. Uh, this one's slightly different than the one outside, I think. It might be the same, but uh, it looks a little different to me because they're using a Chua tank here, and I don't remember seeing that on the other one. And uh, I think even the seat is different. Hey, Bones, welcome to the show. We're, we're just getting ready to wrap up, I think. Um, you got this little uh, wheelie ramp thing. Um, it's just boarding ramps with pillars and tires. Simple, but you know, a lot of people when they're showcasing their little spaceports and stuff, a lot of them don't think about adding those kind of bits in. Um, it looks like they've sandwiched two ships together. It looks like a brown one and a green one that's just kind of been but maybe it's the same one, I don't know. I don't really mess with the ships too much. If you're wondering what the red border is, I'm guessing that's probably um, Orin walls, uh, not Orin, uh, exile walls uh, for that red. Um, but again, uh, simple, but you know, it's still an interesting approach to some of the, the decor, especially like the lettering and stuff. Um, for the black wall, I assume it's probably a maintenance platform, but it could be something else. It could be um, a uh, cellar entrance, just really big and kind of stuck in so that you don't see any of the, the white bricking. You just see the black a little bit to make it look like it's going off to somewhere. But yeah, that would be the last of... Marshall Blues mini Thade plot. So really a fun place to come to if you're looking for inspiration. If you're wanting to, not only for those that are mechanically inclined and want to build some, you know, new contraptions like the mecha robot thingies and the the tanks that we saw over here, um, the taxi, these little carts, the helicopter. There's a lot of other little elements, even just the basic structure of these little um, buildings. Um, it's very uh, insightful if you come and you're looking for ways to build your own. It's a good, good place to drop by. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed um, today's uh, house tours. Uh, we had some varied themes, which is you know one of the things I like to do. I don't want to do like five spaceports in a row, um, but. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I had fun. I'm very happy that folks are helping me uh, find new places to uh, visit. And um, it's always nice to hear folks uh, appreciate, you know, uh, the, the places that we visit. You know, either they got inspiration for their own plot for it or they really just are big fans of maybe the shows or the books that some of them represent and that kind of thing. So it's always fun. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Um, just the final reminder that uh, we do have a new thing starting up for um, Entity, uh, it, that's NA, um, on Exile side. It's the uh, Wednesday Building Bonanza being hosted by Dr. Leskov. It's supposed to be every Wednesday at 5 p.m. PST. Basically, it's going to be kind of like a, a builder's workshop where they will be talking about um, Katya's uh, builder toolkit, um, 
how to make some basic kind of uh, custom decor, uh, landscaping, uh, and just probably just anything you know that you might want to know about or curious about or want to ask about as far as housing goes. Um, unfortunately, it's just NA only and it's at the moment just exiles only. But I think um, they're looking at uh, extending it to Dominion eventually if there's enough interest on that side. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're on Entity side or have access to Entity side, take advantage of it. Um, a lot of people I think have been talking about the, the Humble Bundle as being a great way to gain access to the other regions. So this might be an opportunity to kind of get involved in that. Um, for myself, I probably won't be. I'm just too lazy, I guess. But um, for those that have the, the chance of getting in on that, that would be a, a great opportunity. I know in the past, Katia herself um, asked around on, on the EU side to see if there was a lot of interest for people wanting some, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one help. And she's already said that she will be try to be present at most of these uh, Wednesday classes on NA side to answer any questions that people might have about her add-on. Um, but uh, Nothing ever came of it as far as over on EU side. Uh, I let her know that there was a good many that were interested in such, but it was tough for them to commit wholeheartedly that they would definitely attend because at the time we didn't have a date in mind or a time. And for a lot of people, scheduling is pretty rough. It depends on the hours and everything. So maybe if someone just takes the initiative to do it on EU side, uh, we'll get something going there and I will of course advertise for that as well. Uh, for me personally though, while I do use Katia's add-on on, on basically a daily basis, I don't feel confident enough to share my <laughs> my use of it with other people um, on a regular basis. I mean, you know, aside from what I do on my stream, that's about as far as I want to go because I really don't I don't want to mess people up and give them bad habits by doing it the hard way or the long way or something. Um, I'm sure I don't use that add-on to the fullest by any means. So it's really better to learn it from somebody that really knows the ins and outs and it's forwards and backwards and all that stuff rather than from someone like me. I just do what I do because I'm comfortable with it and uh, it works for me and it might not work for everybody. So. Um, yeah, there's that. Uh, of course, I did mention the Humble Bundle. It is available. There is decor available in it, but um, just to say that as far as I can tell, it's just the hoverboard that is exclusive to the Humble Bundle. The decor that's being offered as the jump starter thing, aside from possibly the house teleporter thing that allows you access at level three, um, the decor itself, like the, the couch uh, and the taco and the bushes and stuff like those are all already available on the housing vendor in live right now. They've been there for um, several days now, uh, maybe longer. I can't remember when we first checked it out, but um, we showcased it on, on the, the stream and they are available. So if you decide that you just don't want to do the Humble Bundle, you're not missing out on any exclusive decor in that respect. Um, those are available for you right now. You can get them if you want. Um, just, you know, or if you want to, to spend the money and get the other stuff, you know, more power to you, and, you know, help for the charity or whatever that it's going to, but uh, you're not missing any exclusive decor that I could see. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of people will be doing that bones for the teleporter and for the, the hoverboard. I know there's a lot of uh, mount collectors. Um, myself, I only use like the one <laughs> mount and I really rarely use the pet on a regular basis. So I don't, you know, while I have a bunch of different mounts and a bunch of different pets, I don't go out of my way to, you know, collect them because I mean, you can only have one out at a time anyway, and I usually forget. And, and I use the, the hoverboard, um, just the one, because it's the fastest I have. And of course, it um, goes across water and stuff like that. But, you know, because I, like I have the fat cat, it's probably the cutest thing ever, but I very rarely use it because it's slower. 
as far as, you know, if you're trying to go across water, you dismount and everything. So, yeah. But just, just thought I would mention those things. Um, uh, apologies for yesterday. Uh, I had meant to come on uh, to the stream and I had had another rough night. For those of you that have watched my show before, you know that sometimes they talk about how my husband snores a lot. And I'm a light sleeper, so it's kind of a bad combination. So I go through uh, bad nights where I don't get a lot of sleep. And the night before last was an example of that. And I ended up falling asleep after I had breakfast. And I didn't get up until uh, it was many hours later. Um, so I was just kind of a zombie for the rest of the day. And I was like, I just can't. I, I don't want to uh, put on a bad show. So I just said, no, I'll skip it today. But uh, if ever I'm gone, it's usually because of that. Um, it's not, you know, I, I hate disappointing people if they're really looking forward to the show. But, you know, it's better that I don't go on rather than go on and not like, you know, kind of zombie, just thinking brains and, you know, not really making sense. Not that I make sense a lot of the time but anyway, but you know what I mean. So, yeah, sorry for yesterday, but uh, it's just one of those um, things. Um, but tomorrow, um, fingers crossed, unless something comes up or I end up having a bad night tonight, um, I should be here tomorrow. Um, I'm thinking we might start uh, playing around with some ideas for uh, decor that might work for the month of March. Since that's coming around the corner and there's a couple of holidays coming up, I figured it might be a good time to get started. I don't really have any plans for doing a plot-wide kind of thing, so maybe just throwing out some ideas for those that might be looking into doing that, that'll give them some ideas for things that they can use for decoration. So we'll be getting into that probably tomorrow. Um, but uh, yeah, for those of you that joined me uh, today, uh, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate all of the follows, the tweets, the retweets. Um, uh, I will mention again, uh, we're coming up soonish on a special celebration. I've already been working on uh, the write-up for that. I probably won't be posting it for another couple of weeks or so, um, but uh, um, yeah, we're getting ready to hit a big milestone for um, the house tours uh, show. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. I've been in contact with Carbine, trying to get some special goodies um, in uh, my grasp. And I got some, but I'm waiting on some other stuff. So fingers crossed all that goes well and we can put on a good celebration for that. But uh, be keeping an eye out because uh, I'll be uh, releasing some, some pertinent information on that soonish. Um, I'm still trying to get all the details ironed out before I go announcing and everything. Because um, some other people I've got to get some stuff from before I can uh, finalize all of that. But uh, I'm hoping it will be a, a big thing. Um, and of course, you know, I'm not really good with advertising myself, but because, uh, you know, I tend to forget to tweet half the time. And, uh, you know, it's not I go around, you know, look at me, look at me kind of thing. Um, but I appreciate those that have been getting the word out. Um, but uh, later, I will be posting in the housing forums for this particular thing because I really want to make it a special deal. Um, and uh, it's not like I'm doing it specifically for more viewers. I'm happy with you know audience that I have now, even if it never grows beyond that. But I do know that some people have found some of this stuff helpful and uh, somewhat entertaining. And so the more people that know about it, the better, I guess. Um, so this will be uh, kind of a twofold thing. Um, but we're coming up on a milestone, not only for um, the, the house tours, but for the stream in general, because I'm very soon coming up to one year of streaming. It sounds ridiculous how fast that's zipped by, because it seemed like it hasn't been that long, but it's been almost a year since I first started streaming. So just think about all the videos we've made. It's just insane. But um, yeah, that's coming up. It's actually going to be in April, but I'm going to be uh, announcing some of it uh, next month. So um, I don't know if I'm going to do that the first next month or probably middle 
middle-ish because uh, I want to give people some hits because I'm looking for some participation and there's some specific things that I'm going to be asking of people that are going to participate so um, like I said I'll, I'll get some of the details out and uh, hopefully folks will um, be helpful and help me make it a, a big deal so but yeah just another little hint that something's coming something big but uh, <laughs> um, We'll, uh, hopefully it will come to fruition in a nice way and not kind of drizzle out into a big flop. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that's it for today. Um, it's been fun. I always love doing the house tours, and it's always great that I have continually a good uh, selection of poems to choose from. Uh, like I said, if I haven't reached yours yet, if yours is on the amazing builders list, that's where I'm getting these. You know, if they're on the list, then eventually someday down the road they will probably be on the tours. It's just as I come across new ones, I kind of mix in new ones with some older ones. Um, and so I have like a queue of homes and I just kind of go through, pick them. Um, I have a lot of them that are in the queue that aren't quite finished. I'm just kind of keeping an eye on them until they feel a little bit more complete. Um, some have specifically asked me to hold off because they're not done. And uh, others have said, you know, go ahead if you want to go. Uh, I'm not done with the, the bunker house yet, maybe, but, you know, you're happy to, you know, free to look around on other stuff. So, um, like I said, if yours is on the Amazing Builders list and I haven't toured it yet, it's just probably I just haven't gotten to it. It's just one of those things where if you have a lot of places to select from, you're going to um, have to take your time to pick through them because I think on average I visit maybe four homes a week, something like that. Today was five, sometimes it's two or three. It just depends on uh, the setup. If I feel like there's going to be a lot to talk about for each house. But um, yeah, so next week will be Dominion's turn. Um, I already have several homes uh, listed for that. So again, um, it's just going to be a matter of working my way through the queue. But I'm just delighted that the housing seems to still be going really strong. Um, because there's always new homes to look at and stuff. Um, again, most of these I find on my own, just randomly touring. But if you know of a home, be it your own, uh, a friend, a guildmate, some stranger's home that you happen to run across on your own, and I haven't gotten it listed yet, feel free to let me know. Just message me either on Twitter, Twitch, in-game, in the forum, however you want to get a hold of me. Um, and... Uh, Pass the names along. As long as the house is public, um, and it could be on Jabit EU, uh, Jabit Exile, or Jabit Dominion, either faction is fine. Um, feel free to drop me a line. I won't promise that it will be guaranteed that it's listed, because um, I do have my own kind of uh, criteria that a house has to meet before I list it. But uh, if it is. Um, a really specific, unique theme, um, or uh, a lot of custom building, it's probably almost a guarantee that I will be interested in knowing about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I appreciate those that have been passing on those, because like I said, my uh, random visiting is slow going. It's not entirely reliable that I will find all of the new homes that have come out in the last week or so. It's just sometimes the, the random generator doesn't want to cooperate. It comes up with the same names over and over, and it's really tough to find those little gems and all of that uh, coal. So um, any help is appreciated. Um, in the meantime, good luck with your own projects. I hope um, things are going well. If you have questions, we're here, you know, every day just about. Um, happy to help brainstorm some ideas if you have questions on that regard. Um, I do belong to a housing circle on Javit EU uh, exile side. Um, so if you're interested in joining something like that, it's a small group, uh, not overly active as far as chatty um, at times, but if you're looking for feedback, 
on a plot or a little part of your plot um, or ideas or uh, suggestions for how to put something together, they're very helpful. And if you're interested in that, just give me a poke in game and I'll see about getting you invited. Um, but um, yeah, I think that's it. I hope I covered everything. <laughs> so until next time, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.